Hey, this is Lenny Agni, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to UV map your item for Dota 2. Uh, the software I'll be using is 3D Studio Max 2012 and an add on for 3D Studio called Textools. You can find all the information you need about text tools on the text tools website. Uh, the creator has a really great website that shows you how to install the, the plugin and how to use it. So please visit it. The link is posted in the comments of this video. Uh, check it out. It's great. On the screen, you can see a example of what we'll be aiming to achieve in this video. And I'm using this weapon as an example because it's it wasn't too difficult to UV. However, I do have a few parts that are split off the UV. So if you have a more complex UV uh, that you're creating that needs to be split, then you'll be able to do that as well. Uh, so to get started, I'll hide this. And this should be what uh, you're starting with at your end, which is your final base model. Uh, so it would be a low poly, probably one of your LODs, and you're going to UV that. So this will be pre-bake and uh, at about the try count that you want. So from here, with my model selected, I open text tools. Now the thing with text tools, because it's a plugin, this button on the top left that I'm pointing to with my cursor may not be there for you. You may have installed it somewhere else. But uh, the main point is you need to open text tools and you should have this little bar that I have on the screen here. So with your model selected, uh, make sure you don't have any sub selections selected and press edit UV. And you should be greeted with a lovely little mess like this. And the first thing I do is I just select all of them in, in the UV window. I just drag select the entire mess, which mess, which uh, selects your entire model as well. And then I just drag them out of the zero one UV space. And now I uh, will select one half of my model. So this one will be, he's gonna be um, split in half because I'm, I'm mirroring the UVs from one half of the mesh to the other. Uh, so that's half, half selected. And if you just click on iron on the text tools toolbar, there's a little icon here called iron. And if you click that, it gives you a really great iron. Uh, and a good rule of thumb with your, uh, now that I'm thinking about it as well, is uh, it's not always the case, and Dota actually deals with this incredibly well, but uh, usually wherever you have a UV split, which at the moment is half of the model, you want to also have a split in your smoothing groups. Or if you have a split in your smoothing groups, you should have a split on your UVs. Uh, like I said, you can get away with not doing it, in Dota sometimes, but not always. Uh, and now that I have this half done, actually first, so with the half selected here, you also want to press on relax, which is right under iron. And uh, another thing you should turn on is checker. And this will put a checker map on your model and you can see the side that's not unwrapped is stretched. So it's just a visual representation of where your UVs are, are being stretched or have errors, which we can clearly see on this side. But on the side that I have ironed and relaxed, you have a pretty good square. Uh, so now um, what you need to do is you need to fit this within the square in your UV mirror. Uh, UV window. So see this darker square, this is your zero to one UV space and that's where you want your model to fit. And you can try and fit it in however you want, but the uh, what you want to do is fill up as much of the space as you can because that's your UV, that's your resolution. And the more space you fill up, then the more resolution you have on your texture. So, 
what I'll do is I'll use these tools in the top of the UV window to scale and move my UVs until I have a good fit. And uh, the problem that you can see with this uh, this weapon is that it's long and somewhat thin and the best I can get is here and we have all of this empty space on the bottom and all of this empty space at the top uh, which feels very very wasteful um, so what I end up doing is I split my UVs uh, I split the handle at this section here and my reasoning behind splitting the weapon here on the handle is that it's covered by the character's hand uh, and every way you split your weapon you you end up creating a seam uh, again Dotter is really great with seams and you often don't see them even if you split them in the middle of the model it's pretty well hidden but I still like to just play it extra safe and try to keep my seams um, seams hidden as best I can uh, also when I previewed this in the game, I was pretty happy with the resolution of the textures anyway, so I didn't end up needing to split it anymore. So to split this off, I just drag select the faces and I have face select, polygon select here at the uh, bottom of the UV window. And then I drag select the parts that I would like to split from my main UV. And you can see on my model, that's these ones here. You can also select on the model if you like and that will do the same job. And then I press break which is on the right side of the UV screen and I can just move them away with move selected. And what this allows me to do is to then increase the resolution of these and I try to always make sure I scale all of the parts together otherwise your UVs then don't match up with the scale of the the texture it's not a hard rule but uh, it makes a difference on a seam or a hard edge and it is they do often appear to be a lot better if they have a the similar similar texture res Uh, and you also want to make sure you leave a small space between the edge of your UV limits. Uh, this will stop when the, the textures are downsized. It'll help reduce any seams that are created or any bleeding. Uh, I'm not quite sure why I have a different smoothing group on this small part of my model. It's been a while since I worked on this one, but in the original UVs I have that split off as well so I'm just going to do that again but uh, to do that I just select the, the polygons I want to be split I press break and then I move them off and unselect and and that's pretty much it so I have a, uh, an ironed and relaxed UV on half of my model and you can see the green seams that end up around the model. Uh, so what I need to do now, uh, I'm quite happy with that. You can see there is some still some empty space and I could have possibly increased the amount of seams I have on this model and I could have used uh, more of the space and created a higher resolution map for this item. But I was happy with how it looked, so, uh, so I, I left it this time. Uh, but you might find on your weapon you need the resolution. There's a lot of weapons I've worked on where if I could have squeezed any more res out, I would have because I really, really needed it. So um, just think about that when you're making your weapon. But uh, to mirror them onto the other side, I close out of my UVs and text tool. And then I collapse my stack. I right click in the stack and I collapse all. Then I select the other side of my model by drag selecting and in the top view I will hold alt which is minus and I will unselect the wrong side and then I will 
drag minus that side and I will unselect. So I want the side that has uh, the finished UVs to stay where it is, to be unselected. Um, that looks okay. So, and then I just delete these. I press delete on the keyboard and I delete half my model. And then I go out of my sub selection and with the model selected, I go up to mirror and I click mirror and then I make sure copy is on and I swizzle the axis until it's the right way. Uh, almost there. You can see I have a gap here, which if I had my uh, if I had my pivot point aligned correctly on the center, then there would have been no gap. But uh, that happens a fair bit. So to line that up properly, I go up to the top right to where I have hierarchy. I click click on effect pivot only. I turn on snaps with my snap toggle, and if you right click on your snap toggle, I make sure it's on vertex. Then I press move and so it's just affecting the pivot only. I snap it to the vertex right on one of the tips here. And then I turn off effect pivot only, but I leave my snaps on and I select this middle tiny ring and I just snap it to the vertex. So now the model is perfectly aligned. I turn my snaps off and I also, at this point, I go down to the small part which isn't mirrored. So these two polygons here, if you are, if you don't mirror your entire object, then you need to get rid of some of them too. They're the ones that were the small section I broke off in the UVs. I then go back and, well, a good observation at this point is you can see now the, uh, the checkerboard is perfect on both sides. So I go back and I select the original side uh, within modify, I select attach and I click on the opposite side, which will attach your model. I then go to vertex and I select all of the vertexes. I right click and I click this small box next to weld. And that brings up this weld option. And here you can set the threshold. It only needs to be small for this one because they are they are aligned very well. So and that should have welded your whole object together. Uh, the problem with this though is even though you have UVs on both sides which are perfect or maybe not perfect but there are they're set up on both sides. Uh, your, your, your smoothing groups are now uh, mirrored as well, which creates a problem on the mirror. But the best way I find to fix that is I go to uh, I go to select polygon and then I scroll down to my smoothing groups and I go to select by smoothing group and I will select by the smoothing group, which we can see is pretty much the whole model. And I'll just again, I will alt, hold down alt and drag select, which unselects half of the model or whichever part you want. And I'll just check that that's right in the viewport. And then I just change the smoothing group to two. And that should be perfect. And we can check that now by selecting by smoothing group. And if we select one, we can see we have one half, two, And three, great. And almost done. So now your model is UV'd, but the problem is if you have mirrored your UVs, which I have done on this model, uh, then they're going to be on top of each other, which is okay until you want to bake. And it can confuse your baker. Uh, it often creates errors when I bake in X normal. So what I will do to fix that, it's pretty quick, is I just make sure I have polygon unselected then I open text tools and I'll open I'll click on edit UVs on text tools again to bring them up 
and you can see here that everything is perfectly aligned within the the cube but uh, the problem is we have overlapping UVs so in the top view I'm going to just select half of my model and I'll make sure that didn't work so you need to turn off ignore back facing then select half your model and in the viewport I will check this again looks okay missed one so with half your model selected go back to your UV window click on this little box here absolute relative type ins and just type one into that box and hit enter and it will be perfectly offset your UVs to the next area uh, and then you need to re-click on this absolute but button to turn it back off again uh, and that's it so I then collapse my stack and I reset my X form just to be sure and I collapse all and this should give you UV maps or UV unwraps for whatever object you're working on. Uh, I hope that was clear enough and I hope it was a help. If you have any questions be sure to ask them in the comments to this video and uh, follow my YouTube channel because I'm updating every week with new content. Thanks for watching.